Shannon, our next speaker, Brahmi Jagan, is a Tamil community activist and of course those 30 Sri Lankan men um, who are now on Nauru have been, were trying to get away from Sri Lanka, that's what brought them here and Brahmi is now going to tell us a bit about that. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land and pay my respect to their elders past and present. This land has always been and will always be Aboriginal land. Um, thank you all for coming and thank you to the Refugee Action Coalition for organising today's protest. Um, as Ian explained, sorry, as um, Nick explained to you, I'm a Tamil from Sri Lanka. And though I've lived in the West all my life and never had to live with the fear of violence and persecution, I'm part of a very, very small and very lucky minority. From Sri Lanka to Palestine to Sudan to Burma to Syria to Egypt, there is so much injustice taking place in this world and it's inexcusable and completely gutless that our leaders have an inability to show humanity and decency towards those who are knocking on our door asking us for protection and another chance at life. About a year ago, um, Get Up asked me to have breakfast with Tony Abbott and we were joined by some Australians who had previously come here as asylum seekers. It was quite a distressing experience. Mr Abbott dared to ask us if we thought that it was better that children were locked up in Australia where at least they were safe as opposed to being free in their own countries fearing violence and persecution. Like that was that was a, you know, that was a disgusting insight to a man that potentially, well, who thinks he could be our Prime Minister and potentially might be. Um, so there's a quote from Zachary Steele which I find very haunting. Among his many achievements, his research into the impact of detention and temporary protection, um, is, his, is his research into detention and um, temporary protection visas on mental health. And I think this quote is really relevant because now we've got this going back to Nauru. So his quote is, I had so many of them say to me, yeah, I was beaten, I was tortured, I was gassed, I was raped. I saw my family killed in front of me, but I survived all of that. But then I got here and they broke me. And this is exactly what we're doing to the men, women and children that are coming to this country. We are breaking them. We are breaking them and we are causing irreversible damage to their mental and to their physical health. On our last visit to Villawood, Lee and me, we met with a, a young Tamil man whose mental and physical abilities have gone, he's gone back to like he was a child. And it was really, really distressing to see that because we had met him a few years, maybe a year or so earlier, and he was perfectly sane and nor like normal. And then when we saw him a few months ago, he was just this smiling person that had no comprehension of what was going on in life. I mean, he did, but at the same time, he didn't. It was, it was actually really distressing. And what was even more distressing was that he had been held in a torture camp in Sri Lanka for a very long time and had managed to escape and come to Australia. And then now he's being held indefinitely in detention in Australia because he's been given an adverse security assessment for reasons that he doesn't know and no one knows and will ever know. And, you know, what's even worse for to this whole story is that months before we'd met him, he had been bashed by, circ well, I don't know if they were circ or immigration officials, but he had been bashed in Villawood in the middle of the night by a group of officials. And so all of this had caused him such um, trauma and grief and anguish that he he basically had been reduced to nothing. And it was heartbreaking to know that Australia had broken him and Australia had stolen his life away from him. Um, now, in regards to Sri Lanka, because I've been asked to talk about a bit about what's going on in Sri Lanka, everyone here probably knows that the situation in Sri Lanka is not so good. Um, uh, but it's actually a lot worse than what we realise is happening there. So the war ended three years ago, but the persecution for the Tamils is still continuing and it's actually getting really, it's getting worse. Lee and me met with a, a, an exiled Sinhalese journalist last week. And we were shocked at what we were hearing from him. Like, we know it's pretty bad there. We're pretty, you know, we're in touch with people all the time. We're giving us reports. But we had no idea just how, how terrible the situation there is for the Tamils. The, the sexual abuse against the women is, is, is sort of getting to, getting to very serious um, proportions where former Tamil Tiger women are being 
we're hearing being, being raped by the army. Um, there is an, on average a, one disappearance every five days in Sri Lanka, which is pretty high, one every five days. Um, thousands of Tamils are still being detained as prisoners of war with no sort of international mechanism to protect them or to ensure that there is some kind of a, a transition from that, from that kind of a state. Um, and, you know, the media freedom in Sri Lanka is, is getting worse. In March this year, a cabinet minister said he would break the limbs of some named journalists and human rights workers whom he called traitors. So it's pretty bad in Sri Lanka. And anyone who says that the situation is fine now is co talking utter, complete rubbish. Because it's not, it's really, it's not, it's not good. It's not ever going to get better unless some huge international mechanism happens to bring about some kind of a change there. And so there are people that are going to consistently and continuously want to leave that country. Um, and, and, and we can be pretty certain that the Australian government has got plans to send a lot of the, the Tamils back home. Now, Human Rights Watch has already compiled 13 instances in the past two years where Tamils removed from European nations um, were subsequently tortured, including reports of rape, beatings and victims being burnt with hot metal rods. And a new report seen by the Independent um, that was published today has uncovered, has uncovered a further 24 cases in which Sri Lankans who voluntarily returned to their homeland, Sri Lanka, which these are probably Tamils, were inter interrogated and tortured. Um, the, the Director of Human Rights Watch UK has said, given the very serious risk of torture facing many Tamils returning from this country, the UK should immediately impose a moratorium on these returns. So it's with great sadness that I stand before you today as an Australian and as a Tamil, knowing that a very, very dangerous and very sad fate is awaiting hundreds of men, women and children that are going to be sent to Nauru, that are going to be sent to Malaysia and that are going to be sent back to Afghanistan and Sri Lanka in the very, very near future. And I thank you all sincerely for caring and for giving a voice to those that we have silent, silenced and that we have forsaken. Thank you.